Welcome back to Forgotten Player Profiles. Today's episode is looking at another forgotten back of the 2000s, who ended his career as the career leader of virtually all of the New Orleans Saints' major rushing categories. Deuce McAllister was a bruising runner with a nose for the end zone, as was made evident by his trademark goal line dive at Ole Miss. He spent eight years as a New Orleans Saint that saw him battle back from major injury twice and be one of the team's most recognized and well-respected players during Hurricane Katrina. McAllister's career was cut short from injuries and we only got to see him at his best for about three seasons. But these were three incredible seasons. But it's too bad that his short-lived prime has been so easy to forget because fans were happy when the deuce was loose. Deuce McAllister would play high school football for the Morton High Panthers, where he was given his nickname Deuce by his head coach Terry Coggins. McAllister received offers from big name schools such as Alabama, Mississippi State, and Ole Miss, but he would ultimately choose to attend Ole Miss and stay in state so that his family could attend the games. McAllister would play in all 11 games for an 8 and 4 Rebels team who capped off their season with a win against Marshall in the Motor City Bowl during his freshman year, where Deuce would score the game winning touchdown. Another highlight of this season would be an Ole Miss upset over number 8 LSU. McAllister spent the season playing behind senior transfer John Avery would be used a lot in short yardage and goal line situations, while also getting some time on special teams. McAllister would finish his freshman season with 402 yards rushing and 7 touchdowns, as well as 7 catches for 71 yards. McAllister's sophomore year would see him become the team's starter, as the Rebels went 7-5 and and won the Independence Bowl versus Texas Tech. The highlight of this season would be an incredible comeback versus SMU, in which the Rebels would trail by 22 points with less than 10 minutes left in the game, but come back and win it in overtime. McAllister would deliver in year two, as he would finish the season with 1,082 yards rushing and seven touchdowns, while also pulling in 18 catches for 154 yards. McAllister's efforts would earn him a spot on the All-SEC second team. McAllister's junior season saw his carries and rushing yards drop, as he and sophomore Joe Gunn formed a backfield tandem in coach David Cutliffe's offense. However, McAllister was still the lead back and helped the Rebels to an 8-4 record, and another Independence Bowl win, this time versus Oklahoma, a game that saw McAllister finish with 239 all-purpose yards and two touchdowns. McAllister would finish second on the team with 930 rushing yards, behind Gunn's 978, but McAllister would score 13 touchdowns on the ground and one more through the air, while being an active player in the passing game overall as he would finish with a career-high 23 receptions for 256 yards. This time, McAllister's efforts would see him voted first team All-SEC and he'd win the Connerly Award as the best player in the state of Mississippi. McAllister was nagged by injury throughout his senior season, but still managed to play in 11 games. He would finish with his lowest rushing total since his freshman year, but would lead the team in rushing. The Rebels would go 7-5 and and make it to the Motor City Bowl, but for the first time in McAllister's college career, he would lose a bowl game, as West Virginia beat them 49-38. McAllister would finish the season with 767 yards and a career-best 14 touchdowns, while also hauling in 18 passes for 190 yards and another two touchdowns. McAllister would leave Ole Miss as the program leader in rushing attempts, yards, and touchdowns, as well as career touchdowns, points, and career 100-yard games. McAllister would also spend one summer of his college career living in Costa Rica so he could get away from the constant fan attention. He lived with a local family and attended classes daily. He also credits his time there for making him more patient, which was substantiated by Ole Miss QB Romero Miller, who would say, I think he's more relaxed. Before he went, it seemed like he was always in a flash. Now it seems like he's been down there. He's sort of relaxed and sort of laid back. The next stop for McAllister was the NFL, and he was the number one ranked running back on Mel Kuyper's draft board. Surprisingly, McAllister would fall to 23, where he would be drafted by the Saints. McAllister would hold out until him and the Saints came to a six-year, $6.2 million contract agreement on August 4th, 2001. Although McAllister was the Saints' first round selection, he was not going to be thrust into a starting role, as thousand yard rusher and future All Pro running back Ricky Williams had that role locked up. However, part of the reason the Saints drafted McAllister was due to Williams expressing an interest in playing baseball. Overall, the Saints would finish the season 7 and 9 and miss the playoffs. McAllister would play a very limited role as he only ran the ball 16 times for 91 yards and a touchdown, but he surprisingly also threw for a touchdown this year. Another area that would become more of a concern as Deuce's career went on is that even in his limited touches this season, he still fumbled the ball once. Ricky Williams was traded to the Miami Dolphins during the offseason, as he later said that it would have never worked in New Orleans with new coach Jim Hazlitt, after the coach that bet everything on him, Mike Ditka, was fired. But this was great news for McAllister, as he would be the team's starter going into the 2002 season. And this would be McAllister's coming out party. But before we get to that, 
Interesting little side story. Prior to this season, McAllister decided not to press charges against teammate Albert Connell, who stole $863 from McAllister's locker, as well as $3,500 from his car. Connell had his five-year contract terminated by the Saints after just one year. But don't worry, Connell said uh, it was just a prank. Okay, so the 2002 season would be Deuce's arrival. McAllister would play and start in 15 games and rush for nearly 1,300 more yards than the previous season, en route to leading the NFC in rushing. And the Saints looked good, as they started 7-2 behind the efforts of McAllister, quarterback Aaron Brooks, and receiver Joe Horn. Unfortunately, the Saints had a less than stellar defense, and their offense fizzled near the end of the year as they finished with a 9-7 record and missed the playoffs. McAllister showed what he was capable of and finished with nearly 1,400 yards rushing and 13 touchdowns, as well as showing he was a legitimate receiver out of the backfield with 47 receptions for 352 yards and 3 more touchdowns, as well as his first Pro Bowl selection. However, Deuce's fumbling issues continued as he had a concerning 4 fumbles this season. 2003 seemed promising, as the Saints still had McAllister, Brooks, and Horn, and drafted promising receiver Dante Stallworth. Unfortunately, the Saints stumbled out of the gate and started with a 1-4 record and finished with an 8-8 record, missing the playoffs again. McAllister would start the season slow, with a combined 203 rush yards in the first three games, including an 11-carry, 8-yard performance versus Tennessee in Week 3. But after this, he went on a tear, as he had over 100 rushing yards in 9 straight games, including a 3-game stress from Weeks 10-12, through 12, where he had 522 rushing yards. McAllister would finish 2nd in the NFC and 4th in the league in rushing yards as he finished with a career-high 1,641 and 8 touchdowns, while also setting career highs in receptions and receiving yards with 69 catches for 516 yards. But he would also cough the ball up 6 times. Overall, McAllister was voted to his 2nd straight Pro Bowl and finished tied for 6th in AP Offensive Player of the Year voting. The 2004 season would see the Saints finish with another mediocre 8-8 eight eight record and miss the playoffs. It seemed a common theme for these Saints teams that they were erratic and very up and down, as they started the season 2-4 and four, but also finished the year on a 4-game win streak. Brooks' play would decline as he finished the year with a 79.5 passer rating. McAllister's production also saw a dip, as he was able to get over the 1,000-yard mark, making him the first Saints running back with 3 straight 1,000-yard seasons, but he was almost 600 yards below his previous year's totals. McAllister played in 14 games, but was only able to crack 100 yards on the ground five times. He did end the year strong with over 125 rushing yards in each of the final two games of the season. Overall, McAllister finished with 1,074 yards and nine touchdowns on the ground on a four-yard average, which would be the lowest of his career when he started more than six games. Again though, McAllister would be plagued by fumbling troubles, as he had five fumbles on the year, bringing his fumble total to start his career to 16. You wish you'd have that popcorn. Nonetheless, McAllister's consistency and strong finish of the season showed the Saints enough to sign him to an 8-year, $50.1 million contract extension prior to the 2005 season, and Deuce understood and welcomed the pressure and expectations that came from a deal like this. Katrina grows into a Category 4 hurricane. A few hours later, it reaches Category 5, the highest possible rating. Winds exceed 175 miles an hour. All residents in New Orleans are ordered to evacuate. For those without the means to leave, the city sets up shelters. New Orleans was struck with tragedy prior to the season as Hurricane Katrina hit the city and caused irreparable damage. The Louisiana Superdome was turned into a shelter for those displaced from their homes due to the disaster. So the Saints played their home games in both the Alamo Dome in San Antonio and Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. While the city of New Orleans were rebuilding from their own disaster, McAllister suffered a personal disaster, as he tore his ACL in a Week 5 blowout loss to Green Bay when his foot got caught in the turf at Lambeau Field. Deuce had had a slow start to the season up to this point anyway, but he was coming off a 130-yard rushing performance versus Buffalo, and it seemed things were looking up. Without Deuce, the Saints' run game suffered, and in turn their passing game suffered, as Aaron Brooks was even worse than the previous year, and veteran receiver Joe Horn was clearly on the decline. The Saints only won one game for the remainder of the season after the McAllister injury and finished 3-13. For his shortened campaign, McAllister put up 335 rush yards and 3 touchdowns, as well as 17 catches for 117 yards. The positives of a bad record is a high draft pick, and the Saints had do-it-all running back Reggie Bush out of USC fall into their lap at number 3 in the 2006 NFL Draft. McAllister could have been upset or cold towards the incoming tailback, 
but instead he reflected on his rookie experience behind Ricky Williams, and he knew he had to treat Bush better. The team's future looked promising, with McAllister coming back from injury, Bush joining him in the backfield, and newly signed QB Drew Brees leading the offense. The 2006 season was McAllister's only playoff appearance of his career. He would come back strong and play 15 games en route to his fourth and last 1,000-yard season. Him and Bush would create an exciting one-two punch in the backfield, while Breeze played much more efficiently than Brooks and had a new number one target in rookie receiver Marquez Colston. The Saints finished 10-6 and and won the divisional round against Philadelphia, where McAllister would have 143 rushing yards and a touchdown, and add a receiving touchdown. New Orleans' season would come to an end in the conference championship against the stout Bears defense that held McAllister to 18 yards on the ground in a 39-14 blowout. Even with the bitter end to the season, McAllister had come back strong, and the Saints finally looked like a team on the rise. But McAllister just couldn't catch a break, and for the second time in three years, his season ended early from a torn ACL, this time in a Week 3 game versus the Titans. However, coming into that game, McAllister and the Saints had already been struggling, as he had only 10 carries in each of the first two games and rushed for under 50 yards in both, which were blowout losses. The Saints would not repeat the previous year's success and finish 7-9 while missing the playoffs. McAllister would finish his brief season with 92 rushing yards and 4 catches for 15 yards. Even with all this, McAllister was loved by the city, and he was a perfect example of an athlete role model as even after his second major knee injury and rehab in 3 years, when he went to the 2008 NBA All-Star Game, he was noticed by superstar LeBron James, whose call of Hoos had children swarming. McAllister to which he affectionately interacted with all of them. McAllister would return in the 2008 season, playing his first game for the team in Week 2 against the Redskins. Deuce was no longer the player he used to be, as his knees could no longer handle the workload that he once was entrusted with, and he was able to play in 13 games, but only started 6 of them. McAllister was not able to crack the 100-yard mark in any game that season, but he did reach a milestone by becoming the Saints' all-time rushing touchdown leader in a November 24th game against the Packers. The year ended with another mediocre Saints record at 8-8 and another season of missing the playoffs. McAllister finished with 418 yards rushing and 5 touchdowns, as well as 18 catches for 128 yards, and a touchdown through the air. And no fumbles. McAllister, along with teammates Charles Grant and the late Will Smith, were also suspended for using diuretics, but they won a federal injunction citing that the maker of the substance they were using, StarCaps, did not disclose that their product contained banned substances to avoid their suspension. Deuce McAllister was released by the Saints shortly after the season. A fan favorite and the Saints' all-time leader in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns upon his release would see his NFL window close. McAllister was technically still an active player during the 2009 season, but would sit out the entire season. But one day before the Saints' divisional round playoff against Arizona, the Saints re-signed McAllister, but McAllister never played, and instead served as an honorary team captain. Head coach Sean Payton would say, Deuce McAllister has always embodied the spirit of the New Orleans Saints and the city of New Orleans. We're excited to have him back with the team and to have him lead us out onto the field tomorrow. These playoffs saw the Saints win their only Super Bowl in franchise history, and McAllister would announce his intention to retire after the season, only five days after his original signing. McAllister was a perfect fit for the Saints. He was a low-maintenance, tough running back who may not have been the fastest or the strongest, but made up for it with how hard he worked. New Orleans embraced him and could relate to his resilience in coming back from injury the same way they came back from Katrina. Although there wasn't much team success during McAllister's time in New Orleans, he gave the fans something to cheer about and set an example for the incoming players that made up their Super Bowl winning team. I don't know if Deuce McAllister is the best running back in Saints history, but he's definitely the most beloved. This has been today's episode of Forgotten Player Profiles. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this one. See you next time.